Guys, can you believe it? I managed to score 10 vintage designer handbags for under 200 US dollars each. And some of them I paid under 200 Australian dollars. So I'm going to show you all 10 of these handbags. I'm going to tell you where I bought them from. And I'm going to give you a little quick overview of each bag. And remember guys, most of these bags already have their own dedicated review video or unboxing video. So I'm going to link all those videos in the description box down below for you. So you can see more details if you want. Okay. So these are in no particular order because they were basically all the same price. Okay. So bag number one, this is is my vintage Gucci Ophidia style camera bag. Guys, this is that coated canvas. So like Louis Vuitton coated canvas, very hard wearing, water resistant, scratch resistant. This one is such a good bag. So this one, you get one main compartment here and you get one compartment here. Now the inner lining is starting to degrade, but not bad enough yet that I need to do anything about it. I can still kind of use it as is. And you have an adjustable crossbody strap. Now this one, it's lost its strap keeper. It either never had a strap keeper or it's lost its strap keeper. And the hardware is still really good. That's still super gold. And the interesting thing about vintage Gucci is that the logos used to use a mix of silver and gold hardware. Super unique, guys. This one, just like Louis Vuitton monogram, the Gucci monogram goes with everything. It's a super neutral. You may think, oh, too much logo, but it is super neutral. Okay, so bag number two, my trusty Louis Vuitton Big Mama St. Cloud GM. She is the biggest version of the vintage St. Cloud bag. And this is a bag with a flat bottom that can stand up on its own. Now, if you guys watch my channel, you know I love when a bag can stand up on its own. She's got a buckle here, leather interior. I love that the vintage Louis Vuittons had leather interior. It just makes it so much more quality. Um, they, they did get sticky pockets when the Vitonite degraded, so that part I don't love. And you get a back pocket for all you back pocket lovers out there. And you get an adjustable strap with a shoulder strap. And guys, I actually own three St. Clouds now. So I have two St. Clouds in the GM, one in Epi, this monogram one. And I also have the monogram in the PM. So for anyone who's interested in an in-depth comparison between the PM and the GM size, if you want to know what's going to fit well for you, I'll leave that video linked up above and in the description box down below for you. But guys, I always thought this was such a good price under 200 US dollars back in 2018. Okay, so bag number three, monogram again. This is the vintage Louis Vuitton sack bandolier bag. Bandolier meaning the strap. It has a strap similar to how a speedy bandolier has a strap. This is like the predecessor to the speedy bandolier. Not the predecessor to the speedy because that's been around for ages, but this one, it has like that concept of a bandolier. This one is such a unisex bag. And you know what I use this for? Plane travel. It can go underneath the seat in front of you. I even use it as my own footrest. I know it's a bit harsh on the Louis Vuitton bag, but this one has that treated leather, not for shedder, So it's water resistant, no water stains, really nice, vibrant monogram. Also leather interior. I've just got her stuffed at the moment. I love that you can do long shoulder or short shoulder with this one. This is such a great casual bag. This would be like a good mum bag too. You can shove nappies in here. You can shove a baby bottle, you, um, baby wipes. And I got this for about 200 Australian dollars from a Thai Instagram seller back in 2018 as well. Okay, next up is this vintage YSL grandma bag. This one is a coated canvas. They've actually re-released the YSL canvas in their modern styles as well. So this one has this treated leather as well, so water resistant. You get a back pocket. You get this grandma top handle and it has that purse frame. And then you open her up. I've got her stuffed at the moment. Now I didn't get the strap with it, but I just attached my own gold chain anyway. So this was from a Thai Instagram seller as well. And I paid about 180. Australian dollars, so well under 200 US dollars. Okay, so bag number five. This is my vintage Dior Trou de Print in the black bag. Now this is a bag that comes with an adjustable strap. So I thought that was really handy. Now this one I got from an Australian eBay seller for about 190 Australian dollars. So you get a back pocket on this one and it's a magnetic clasp leather inside. Really gorgeous, unique bag. Hey everyone, and if we haven't met before, I'm Lady Vintage Bags and I love vintage designer handbags. And I'm here to show you that you can not only own, but even collect gorgeous designer handbags just on a budget by buying vintage. So if you love pre-love vintage or affordable designer handbags, then hit subscribe and stick around because I'm your girl. 
Okay, now back to the video. Okay, so bags number six and seven, I'm gonna do together because they're the same bag. So these are my Louis Vuitton Epi Leather Vintage Pochette Accessoires. Now we know Louis Vuitton just re-released this old model Pochette Accessoires in the Epi Leather in the black and silver colors, but those are with silver hardware. These vintage ones are with gold hardware. Now the interesting thing is, this is a size 24. This is a size 21. The new one that just came out is like a size 22. So it's like in between these two sizes, but closer to this one. So just to show you the differences in size there. There. Now these two are really great grab and go bags. And this yellow one has this pop of purple interior. So I thought that was really fun. Now this one I bought from Facebook from a Filipino seller. And this one I bought from eBay from a Japanese seller. So they're about the $200 mark. Really good grab and go. And I just add gold chains. I don't use the original straps. Well, this one, I didn't even get the original strap. So for anyone who's interested in the pochette accessoires, I'll be looking for the epi leather on the pre-love market now before the prices just go too, too crazy. So I was lucky to get these so cheap. This is my Louis Vuitton Montaigne 27 clutch. Now guys, all of these bags I'm showing you today is inside my Louis Vuitton collection video. So if you haven't already seen my huge Louis Vuitton collection video, I'm going to link that up above in the description box down below. I've got monogram, I've got epi leather, I've got so many vintage bags because I'm a vintage girl. So this is a bag that actually bought in poor condition. So the epi leather's lost its structure, it's lost its luster, and you can see the corners are in really bad shape. They're curled in. You can see the bottom is in bad shape. It's popped out like a pot belly. It's supposed to go in like this, but it actually pops out like that. And the snap button is not really tight anymore, but I purposely cheapened out on the condition of this bag because I punched holes into it to hack it into a crossbody bag. And I didn't want to punch holes into a bag that had too good of a condition. But now I've learned that I do not like epi leather bags that have too poor of a condition, that have curled corners, that cannot stand up on their own when they're supposed to. So that is a lesson I have now learned from this bag. Okay, so bag number nine. This is my Louis Vuitton Pochette Cura. This is another men's clutch in the tiger leather. I got this for about 170 Australian dollars back in 2018. What a great price. And guys, this has my beautiful S lock that I'm in love with. If you guys know me, you know I love S locks. I've got three S locks bags right there. And guys, I actually used this bag to demonstrate how I polish Louis Vuitton vintage hardware. So if you have any hardware that needs polishing, I'm gonna actually link my tutorial video up above and in the description box down below. And guys, I also hacked this one into a crossbody bag, so I punched holes into it. Now, even though this one is in better condition than this, the price was nearly exactly the same. So I didn't mind punching holes into it for that price. Like, it's not like I'm going to resell it for heaps of money anyway. So I needed the bag to work for me. Okay, now bag number 10. This is another vintage Louis Vuitton. So this is a vintage Louis Vuitton pochette home in the Capengo gold color. This one was from an Australian private seller. It was just someone selling their own bag and I got like a $50 discount. So it was originally priced over $200 and I sent best offer and they accepted about like $180. So I got a really, really good deal on this one and the condition was not too bad at all. Now this one I hack into a crossbody by using a bag organizer and I've just sewn in my own. These are actually picture frame hanging hooks. So I've just made my own D-rings by sewing in picture frame hanging hooks that I get from Bunnings. And then now I can attach a strap and turn this into a crossbody bag. So guys, can you believe it? I got 10 designer handbags, each for under 200 US dollars, most of them for under 200 Australian dollars. And guys, I still can't believe I scored so many good deals. Granted, I started back in 2018 and I went really hard back then, but still, I think that's really good prices when you look at those numbers. So guys, I wanna hear in your collection, do you have any vintage bags? And I want to know what awesome scores you got. Tell me the name, tell me the model. And if you're comfortable, tell me the price in the comment section down below too. I love hearing about all these bargain scores for vintage designer handbags. And guys, if you're wondering how am I punching holes into these bags and adding these D-rings, I'm actually going to link my tutorial here for you to carry on with next. 